the civil war in Yemen will soon enter its sixth year. Tens of thousands have been killed amid fighting between Iran-aligned Houthi rebels and Yemen's government, backed by a Saudi-led coalition that's supported by the United States. Disease and acute hunger crisis have killed untold thousands more. And for children in Yemen, the war hits especially hard. Their losses can be profound, none more so than the deaths of or abandonment by their own parents. From the rebel-held capital of Sana'a, special correspondent Jane Ferguson reports. As the winter sun rises over Yemen's ancient capital, Sana'a, boys in this orphanage play soccer while they wait for their breakfast. When it comes, it's a humble meal, just lentils and bread. But it's hot, and they are happy to have it. The little boys eat separately, one of them sent to collect the bread each morning. The children break the bread together before it gets cooked on an outside stove with milk. It's not much, but in this city, many children have much less. Dariat al Aitam is the oldest orphanage in Yemen. It opened its doors to boys in 1925 and moved from Sana'a's historic old city to this spot in the 1970s. Now, around 400 boys call it home. Some sent here by extended family, others abandoned by their destitute parents, or taken in from the streets. Little Mohsen Duma's father was killed in Yemen's current brutal civil war. He is 12 years old and arrived with two older brothers. My grandpa and uncle brought us here to study. They told us we have to study here until we finish high school. Like most of the children here, he knows what he wants to be when he grows up. A doctor. Mohsen is lucky. He still gets to go home to his mom after term ends. In the Arab world, children are often considered orphans when their father dies. In Yemen, impoverished by the war, single mothers can rarely cope. Some are forced to remarry and start new families. But Mohsen also has Ahmed Ali, his best friend and neighbor from his home village. Ahmed is 11 years old and lost his father also fighting in this war. It has been four months since I came here, so I'm a new student. I was in the village and he was in a military camp. When we ask what happened to his father, he simply says the Arabic word for airplane. Bye. Ahmed's father was a soldier, killed in an airstrike. Like many of the boys who have mothers still alive, they live for the promise of visits back home. We are going to have exams soon, and then I can go back and see her. But Ahmed hasn't escaped the experience of war. He, like so many of the children here, has seen too much already. Fighter jets used to bomb and farms were exploding. And next to our house there was bombing. Things were exploding and burning. The other boys here tell me of the times the airstrikes hit near the orphanage, and they were terrified. When the airstrikes come, we pray and ask God to save us, one of them tells me. At times, the war outside the orphanage walls has come dangerously close. Before the war, there were many more boys here. But because our location is between two military areas that were targeted extensively, some students got scared and left for their villages. Yet, as the war grinds on, need surpasses fear here and boys have steadily shown up at the gates. The majority have come here because their father died. And in some cases, it's because divorce happens and a mother has remarried. But it's also because of poverty. Of all the different groups of people in Yemen, it is children who are by far the worst affected by this war. In the chaos and cruelty of Yemen's war, boys are being recruited to fight in it. The Houthi rebels have child soldiers as young as 11 in their ranks, according to the United Nations. Yeah. Airstrikes by the Saudi-led coalition have hit children too, like the 40 killed last August when a coalition bomb was dropped on a bus full of little boys. And then there is the menace of starvation. Millions of Yemenis are on the brink of famine as the country's fragile economy has collapsed in this war. 85,000 children have already died of malnutrition and preventable diseases, according to the charity Save the Children. At least here, the boys can have a meal and a safe place to sleep for the night. 
The promise of an education gives them a fighting chance at life when they have to leave here. And the boys love their studies. But they have also lost so much. And it's still an ordeal for the newest arrivals. When the students first arrive at the orphanage, they feel shy and don't tend to speak, but after a while, they get used to the other boys. They are sad at first, grieving, and they isolate themselves, sitting alone. But then they get used to it and make friends. Friends like Mohsen and Ahmed Ali. They showed me their beds in the dorm room, right next to one another. Bedtime is 9 p.m., they tell me. Sometimes, one of the older boys sings them to sleep. It's some comfort for these boys, who are just a handful out of the millions who need help surviving this war. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jane Ferguson in Sana'a, Yemen.